Welcome to part 15 of the Johnny Blender 3 series. Uh, in the series, we're, or in, excuse me, in this section, we're going to go ahead and finish up painting the weights on the jacket and gloves. And then, if we have time, I'll go in and show you how to create a mesh deform, which is one of my favorite objects to work with in Blender as of late. Um, so I'll tell you more about that when we get to it. So, anyways, um, remember as we were in uh, part 14, we're painting our weights on here. And since we went ahead and deleted inside the sleeves, we really don't need inside the jacket either. So let's grab some of these faces in here, control L, and let's get rid of those. Because we're never going to see them anyways. And so that'll be a lot easier to manipulate here. So um, right now we have the chest bone selected, and I'm just painting the the jacket area accordingly. Let's go ahead and get some of that button there. With the with the objects that you've added on, like the buttons, it's really difficult to get them to behave the way you want to. So you got to be kind of careful when you're painting the weights that you don't like slightly grab part of one of them. So if you like barely brushed just a tiny spot on here and then you moved move this around you know it might smear it somehow and that's not desirable at all so um, so those buttons are going to be a little difficult to get painted properly but we'll we'll make do we'll, we'll get it tell you what we can do which will guarantee that they're applied to whatever section we're wanting it right now we're on the hip section so just select all of those vertices let's go back to vertex select mode make sure they're all selected and we'll go ahead and assign and tab out you can see it's 100 percent selected there go ahead and grab the spine bone tab out make sure everything's deselect those guys make sure everything's assigned uh, uh selected and assign that to the spine and then the top two will be assigned to the chest so we'll go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and hide the arms for now. Select that, hide it, select that, control L, hide it, and we'll select this top part here and go ahead and assign that to the chest. It's, the vertex is already selected right there, assign, and we'll tab out. Now, uh, we don't really need these buttons applied here, so I'll tell you what let's do. Let's grab those, actually grab everything below that, and remove that from our chest selection. There we go. And this guy can fall off. We don't need it to be 100%. Let's make it half, 0.5. And we'll go ahead and assign that. That'll be a nice transition there. So we'll do the same thing up here. Um, hmm. Let's grab this one and do 0.1 assign. So that'll help fade that out a little easier. And do the same thing around here around the bottom. Grab all those guys and that guy. And say assign there. So it kind of says, hey, don't put these vertex, vertices on there very much. Um, looks like we have some something going on up in here. So let's select all of these guys and remove we'll remove 100%. There we go. And let's remove all of these 100% as well. There we go. That's a little better. Now, it looks like there's something not being selected in here. So let's make sure we select everything in there. And assign it. There we go. Okay, so now actually let's grab this guy here and say 0.25 sign. Eh, maybe in less. Assign. There we go. Okay, so now when we rotate, the buttons should, for the most part, eh, they're probably catching part of the neck a little bit, a little bit, and probably some, yeah, there we go. Got to watch some of those uh, extra parts there. Let's grab all of these. Let's say upper arm, remove completely, upper arm dot L, and find it. Upper arm dot R, where is that at? There it is. 
and remove as well. Okay, so those buttons should be just fine there on the chest now. You see we're kind of smearing that middle one there for some reason. Looks like it's being deformed a little bit. Grab our subtract. Sometimes it's the oddest places that you find where it's being deformed from. And <laughs> sometimes you can't find any place where it's being deformed from. So sometimes you just got to play with it and see if anything changes it. Bone, nothing. The head bone is moving some stuff. So let's select all of the torso again and remove everything from the head and remove everything from the neck. So that shouldn't be moving anything. So why is that button there being stretched out like it is? Let's grab it and say remove from the chest. Remove from the hip. It's still smearing it somehow. Remove from the neck. Remove from the head. Hmm. I guess it's probably because that spine has so many sections in it. We'll just have to make sure we be careful when we're animating, I guess. So select everything, and okay, well, let's let's get the rest of this thing done. Unhide our arms and remove them from the chest. There we go. Okay, so now we need our gloves. Make sure everything's working on them, and everything should be well, pretty well set. I think the probably add some on that like we did on the hands. Strength is not very strong. There we go. Okay. So I'll come back out and see how well this deforms now. Okay, not too bad. And the gloves should act the same way as the hands. All right. I uh, think we're good to go for the most part. Um, if those buttons get to be too much of a hassle, uh, we can always just delete them and kind of paint them on. You know what, let's do that. Let's just get rid of these buttons here that are behaving badly. Go ahead and delete those vertices. Tie back in. Now we don't have anything to worry about when we're rotating our chest around. Okay, now let's uh, see about repainting those really quick. Uh, UV image editor. I know this is kind of a back and forth, back and forth between a bunch of different stuff, but that's the best way to learn things sometimes. Select all those and let's just jump in here. Go to texture paint and grab that color that the buttons originally were there. Just come in here. You know what? Let's make it a little darker first. Let's grab that dark, dark color that's surrounding the J and the B. I'll kind of do a little shortcut here so we don't have to actually trace around it. Let's make our th radius uh, 50. Okay. And let's. Get that window over. Sit in just to hide that window. I need it right now. Let's just come in here and this dot. Actually, <laughs> let's increase our curve 
Do we get a more sharp fall off? Okay, so I'll just dot. A little too big. 30. There we go. Make it right there. Dot. 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 And dot. Okay. And now we'll get that right color. There we go. Decrease it a little bit smaller, about 20 maybe? 21. And dot. You can kind of see it just filling in that circle, so it's kind of outlining it already. And there we go. Hmm. I really don't like the way that looks, though. Ah. Uh, let me get that dark color again. Uh, feel free to skip forward if you if you don't want to mess with this. Uh, I apologize for kind of going off track. Oops. That looks better. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So we'll go ahead and save that. Actually, save the image. Save image. And one thing we can do to kind of give this a little bit of a three dimensional aspect rather than just be painted on is uh, we can also use that as a, t uh, as a bump map. So let's go to our material settings and actually go to our excuse me our texture tab and go to jacket texture come down here to geometry turn it on to normal and tell you what let's do let's turn our in to bring up our properties turn our display where is our display there it is back to GLSL textured solid and should be able to see any bump maps we've applied now to textured there we go it's not wanting to act like a bump map is it oh uh, let's see blend mode let's see bump mapping there we go um, change it to default there we go now you can see it the uh, the black is kinda of being raised up and I actually want the opposite I want the black to be going down so let's set the normal to be negative let's try negative two and you can kinda of see it adds a nice bump effect to the uh, to the buttons as well there we go okay now uh, while we're in the material I'd like to make it have a little bit more of a leathery texture leathery feel so let's add one more texture there and clouds will be fine and change the colors to ramp and let's set the cloud type, let's de decrease all these uh, from Blender Original to, let's try Veronoi yeah there we go collapse all these and go to influence, turn off color and let's set that to geometry as well except we're gonna set that way way down to 0.25, we'll try that go ahead and set the bump mapping to default and since it's third in the list we need to bump it up so it mixes but the other one doesn't look like it's wanting to show up on there. Uh, let's see. Compatible. Default. Hmm. Well, that should be showing up. Maybe it's because there's a transparency there. Let's set that up. No, it didn't change anything, did it? Well, <laughs> that was supposed to work. <laughs> I guess it didn't, but obviously. Um, okay, well, we'll uh, just uh, back out of there and not worry about that. Okay, now, back to multi-texture. Turn off. Go back to solid. There we go. Um, as you can see, there are some vertices of the jacket coming through the wrist here. 
So what we need to do is kind of mask those out. And there's a modifier called just that. It's called mask. So let's go ahead and, you know, let's go ahead and save that again real quick. Collapse that. All right. Um, there's a, uh, a modifier called mask. And we can essentially hide pieces of our model. So just select the ones that are showing through. Go into our object data and add a new vertex group, so hit the little plus sign, and we'll say uh, gloves underscore mask. There we go. Assign them to that uh, 100%. Change your weight back to one. Sign. Okay. Now we'll go to our modifiers and add a mask. There we go. And say the vertex group of uh, what was it? Gloves mask. There we go. And it hides everything except for those vertices. So we say invert. And there we go. No longer showing through because it's hidden now. OK, so let's unhide Johnny. And we don't really need to have him with his arms and things showing. So we need to go ahead and mask those off as well. So let's grab him. And we'll pretty much hide everything below the neck and above the waist. Let's go to our front view. Select all of this down to about right there. Not that bottom one. Oops. There we go. And then select this top. I can get in here. There we go. OK. And we'll go ahead and assign those to a new, a new, uh, new uh, vertex group. Call that one. Uh, jacket dash gloves underscore mask. You can name it. <laughs> I was holding down shift when I hit backspace and it deleted everything, so hit caps lock. Jacket dash gloves underscore mask. There we go. And assign those. Okay, give him the old mask modifier and say jacket gloves mask invert oops there we go and now you can see everything's hidden I actually need to grab there we go and assign and tab back out and there we go everything's hidden that doesn't need to be shown okay ah, I apologize we're not gonna have time to get into the mesh to form we'll do that I swear in part 16 so for now, actually, <laughs> I noticed one thing. We're not done yet. I noticed that this master control bone is still set to deform. So go ahead and turn that off. Now, we can move Johnny around. And it'd be a lot easier to move him around if the mesh is set to have two a view of two in the subsurf view. So if I grab the model, there we go. So go ahead and set view of one actually makes it work a little better okay and let's go and bump our mask up I like to keep the subsurface the last thing on the list so let's go and bump that up on there and then also on the jacket collapse all these and let's move our subsurf down there we go same thing on the gloves there we go okay so now save that Johnny is able to uh, be posed around. Did I disconnect this guy as well? No, there we go. Remember, they stay parented to each other, but you don't have to connect them. So, okay, so now Johnny can pose. It'd be a little weird right now because his eyes aren't moving with his head, but like I said, that has to do with our mesh deform. So, we will get to that in part 16. So, have fun playing with Johnny here. Move him around. Wiggle his toes. Stomp on a bug. Whatever. Okay. So that's gonna be all for part 15. I actually, <laughs> actually kept my 20 minute mark this time. Woohoo! So uh, yes, that is all for part 15. I will see you in part 16.